In the last lecture, we had discussion on linearity and conjugation properties of Laplace transform and in this lecture, we will discuss two more properties and they are time reversal and time scaling properties. So let's start our discussion with the third property which is time reversal property and to understand this property, I have taken one time domain signal ft and let's say the Laplace transform of this signal is equal to fs and the region of convergence is equal to r and now we will perform the time reversal operation on the input signal ft and after time reversal we have new signal which is f minus t and we know the Laplace transform is the unique property of a signal Therefore, we will have a new Laplace transform. The old Laplace transform was Fs and the new Laplace transform will be F minus S. The region of convergence will also change. It will become minus R. So you can see when you perform the time reversal operation on Ft, the reversal of Laplace transform will also take place and the region of convergence will also reverse. So this is the time reversal property. Remember it and now we will prove this property. To prove this property, I will write down the Laplace transform Fs. It is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity signal ft multiplied to e power minus st dt and we are performing the time reversal operation on ft therefore we will replace t by minus t but you have to be careful regarding replacement of t by minus t this t here will only replaced by minus t don't replace this t by minus t because e power minus st is the integral kernel of the Laplace transform. This is not the input. ft is the input and the reversal operation will only occur in the input. So let's have the new signal from the old one. The old one is ft and after reversal we have f minus t. Let's say the new signal is having the Laplace transform fs dash and it is our task to calculate fs dash and uh, if we can prove that fs dash is equal to f minus s then our proof is over. So let's move to the next step in which we will write the Laplace transform fs dash it is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity time domain signal f minus t multiplied to e power minus st dt now let's say minus t is equal to tau this implies t is equal to minus tau and this implies very small t will give us negative of very small tau and the range of integration will also change when t is equal to minus infinity put t equal to minus infinity here and you will get tau equal to plus infinity similarly when t is equal to plus infinity you will get tau equal to minus infinity so in this way we have a new variable of the input and now we will quickly write down the Laplace transform fs dash with new variable of input. The Laplace transform will not change. It will remain the same because we are replacing one variable by another variable and we are also adjusting the range of integration accordingly. So fs dash is equal to integration from plus infinity to minus infinity because we have to focus on the new variable of input which is tau so plus infinity to minus infinity the input signal is f tau and the integral kernel is e power minus st 
and we know the integral kernel is the function of two variables the first variable is the variable of output which is equal to s in this case and we are having s here this means everything is fine with the variable of the output but if you look at the variable of the input you will find it is tau here but here it is equal to t so it is important to replace t and have something in terms of tau you can see t is equal to minus tau so we will write minus tau in place of t so we will get the integral kernel equal to e power plus s tau and in place of dt we will have minus d tau i will write minus here now if we interchange plus infinity and minus infinity then this negative sign will become positive so the laplace transform fs dash is equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity f tau e power s tau d tau but still we don't have the integral kernel of the laplace transform we need negative sign here so let's have the negative sign in the next step integration minus infinity to infinity f tau e power minus minus s tau d tau this is same as e power s tau but we have taken negative out so we have minus of s and if you compare this with the formula we are having here you will find there are two changes the first change is that the input is having a new variable which is tau but it will not change the laplace transform so f s dash is equal to f s but there is one more change in place of s we have minus s so here we will have negative sign so you can see fs dash is equal to f minus s and in this way we have proved the time reversal property now i want to talk about one important thing the proof we are having here is similar to the proof we had in case of time reversal property of fourier transform in place of j omega we are having s and the remaining part is same so from now on i will not give you the proof of the properties which are similar to the fourier transform because if you have followed the lectures in a serious manner then you can easily have a proof of these properties i will definitely give you the proofs which are different from the fourier transform and now we will move to the fourth property which is time scaling property we will understand this property by taking a time domain signal ft let's say the signal is having the laplace transform fs and the region of convergence is equal to r now we will perform the time scaling by a so let's have a t in place of t and here a is not equal to 0 in this case we will have the laplace transform which is the modified version of this laplace transform we are having fs here but in this case we will have fs over a multiplied to 1 over mod a and the region of convergence which was r initially will get multiplied by mod a the proof of this property is similar to the proof of the time scaling property of fourier transform so if you do not remember how we proved the time scaling property of fourier transform you can refer that lecture but we are not going to waste our time by following the same process again and i believe you can easily prove this property if you have followed the fourier transforms lectures in a serious manner so this is all for this lecture remember the time reversal property and the time scaling property i will end this lecture here see you in the next one